Hi, I am Whitney Watkins. I am a SLIS graduate student and the support liaison for Canvas, our new LMS. This tutorial will cover logging into Canvas and provide an overview of a sample course site to acquaint you with the various components of a Canvas course site and how they might be used within the SLIS course. To log into the SLIS Canvas site, go to http colon double forward slash slissapps.sjsu.edu forward slash canvas. This is a SLIS specific page for logging into Canvas. You can bookmark this page for easy access. Notice the support link here for SLIS tech support. You will click on the blue login button to enter your username and password for your SJSU1 account to log into Canvas. Also note the button to create and reset your password. Your username is your SLIS student ID number. If you have not already created a password for this account, please click on the Create Reset button to complete this. If you mistype your information when logging in, you will be prompted with a blank form to try logging in again. Once you have logged into the system, you will be directed to your Canvas dashboard. Let's briefly cover the main parts of the dashboard. At the very top of the page is the global navigation, which includes links of all of your courses and groups, assignments, grades, calendar, and the Help Corner links. The Help Corner area contains links to your Canvas profile, your Canvas email inbox, your profile and personal settings, the Help menu, and the Logout link. At the right side of the page, you will see your sidebar. Here you will see three helpful feeds. Your to-do feeds that list the next five assignments you need to turn in, the coming up feed that lists the next five assignments or events due the next week, recent feedback feed that lets you know where your instructor has left a comment or a grade for one of your submissions. In the center of the dashboard, you will see your global stream. This contains a stream of the recent activity from all of your courses. There are announcements, discussions, assignment notification, and conversation notifications. You can view the details of each section by hovering over the section and clicking on the Show More button. Let's start with the global navigation area containing the main level navigation links. This navigation is visible no matter where you are in the Canvas site. On the far left, by clicking on the SJSU logo, you will be taken back to your Canvas dashboard. Hovering over the menu item links will bring down drop-down menus. In the Course and Groups link, you'll get a drop-down menu of all of your available courses and groups which you are enrolled in. You can click on these links and you will be directed to that course or group in which you selected. You can click on the Courses and Groups menu link instead of hovering to view an index page listing all of your courses. If you hover over the Assignments Area link, you will see the next five assignments that you need to turn in. Clicking on this link will redirect you to a listing of all assignments for your courses. You can view assignments from individual courses or you can view all of them at once. The next link you have is the Grades link. This will take you to a grade summary page where you can see your grade for all of your courses in which you are enrolled. Then we have the Calendar link. Clicking on this link will take you to your Canvas calendar. You will see options to view the calendar in week, by month, or in agenda format. You will also have a mini calendar on the right hand side. Below the mini calendar, you will see a listing of all of your course calendars. The colors next to the course listings correspond to the color on the calendar. Click on the box next to the course to either include or remove that course from viewing in your main calendar. You can add an event to your calendar by clicking on the plus symbol, which will bring up a pop-up screen for you to fill out. Click the Submit button to add that event to your calendar. You can also add an event by clicking on the day 
you want to add the event. At the very bottom, on the far right of the sidebar, you can get the calendar feed, which you can add to any calendar app that takes iCal feeds, such as your Google Calendar, an iCal calendar, or Outlook. Let's head back to the Canvas dashboard. On the far right of the global navigation, you have the Help Corner links. If you click on your name, you will be directed to your Canvas profile. Here you can edit your profile by clicking on the Edit Profile button on the right sidebar. Here you can add content and information that you feel comfortable sharing with others, as your profile will be visible to all other course members in which you are enrolled. Next you have the Inbox link. This link will take you to your Canvas email. In the Canvas toolbar, you can filter messages by course, by type, you can compose a message, reply to a message, reply all, archive a message, delete a message, or under the options, star or forward a conversation. You can also filter conversations by a user. Back at the Help Center, you can click on the Settings link and view and edit your personal profile setting. In this area, you can view links to edit your profile, edit your notification preferences, view your personal files, view your profile settings, and access the ePortfolio area where you can create and edit your ePortfolio. Click on the Settings link in the left navigation. This is where you can edit defaults for your profile. This is where you will also update the ways that you can be contacted. You can add multiple email addresses and set one for the default. You can also set your language, time zone, and any other contact methods you wish to be notified from. Before you can set your notification preferences, you will need to set the ways you want to be notified. Your account will already display the email associated with your account. However, if you want to add an additional email address, click on the Add Email Address link. The default email address will have a star next to it. If you want to add any other type of contact method, such as a Twitter account or a text messaging number, click Add Contact Method. You can delete additional contact methods at any time by clicking the trash can icon. To change these settings within your profile, click on the Edit Settings button. Once you have this set up, you can click Update Settings, and then you can set your notifications preferences under the Notifications tab. Your notification preference page will display all of the contact methods you have added across the top of the page. You will need to specify how you want to be notified for each contact method. To change a notification for a contact method, hover over the notification type you wish to change. You will be given four options. A check mark for immediate notifications, a clock for daily notifications, a calendar for weekly notifications, or an X for no notification. Notifications are divided up into six categories. Course activities, discussions, conversations, scheduling, groups, and alerts. Hover over the name of the notification to view the notification description. Clicking on the Files link in the navigation will take you to your File Manager, where you can upload personal files you want to have in Canvas. This is also where your profile image will be stored. When you are in the Files Manager, you will notice that the navigation disappears. To get back to that navigation, go ahead and click on the Settings link in the Help Corner area. Next is the ePortfolio. The ePortfolio area is where you can build your ePortfolio. For more information on that, please see the tutorial on building an ePortfolio in Canvas. If you need any technical support in Canvas, you will need to click on the Help link in the Help Corner area. Clicking on that, you will be given a menu of options to choose from.
select the SLIS Canvas Technical Support for Faculty and Students link. To close this menu, click on the X in the top right corner. Let's go back to the dashboard. Now we'll go over the areas for navigating your course. For demonstration purposes, I'll be using a practice course site to show you some of the Canvas features within the course sites. To access my courses, I will hover over the Courses menu item in the Global Navigation and click on the course I want to enter. We are now on the site for the course demonstration. I'd like to point out that the Global Navigation and the Help Corner links are still visible as they were from your Canvas dashboard. Remember, you can get back to the Canvas dashboard at any time by clicking on the logo in the top left corner. Once in your Canvas site, you will see your course homepage, your course navigation, your course sidebar, and the course breadcrumbs. Before looking at the functionality of all the navigation links, let's briefly look at the main content area of the course homepage. Your instructor selects what you see for your course homepage, so this will vary from course to course. At the top of the main content area, you may see the breadcrumbs for your course. You can click on the links in the breadcrumbs to navigate to that specific area. You may see a link to view a course stream. Clicking on the link will bring up a new page. This stream looks and works very similar to your dashboard stream, except instead of including all of your enrolled courses, it is specific only to the course you are viewing. On the left of the course, you will now see your course navigation. The course navigation links help you get to where you need to go within the Canvas course. Instructors can customize what links are shown in a course, so if you don't see certain links, your instructor has hidden them from your view. Instructors can also change the order in which the links appear on the navigation. On the right-hand side of the screen, when you are in the home page, you will see sidebar content for your course. The sidebar provides the tools available for the, the Canvas feature you are currently using. Now let's go through the functionality of the links in the course navigation. The first link in the demo course is the home link. Clicking on this link will take you back to your course home page. Next we have the announcements link. Clicking on this link will take you to a page listing all of the announcements that have been created for your course. This area is similar to the news tool in the old D2L platform. You can click and view individual announcements, you can respond to announcements, also you can get the RSS feed for your announcements by clicking on the RSS feed symbol. Next we have the modules area. This area is similar to the content section in the old D2L platform. This is where your instructor will organize and link to all of the necessary course content. The course content is separated by modules that can be organized by unit, week, or lesson, depending on how your instructor chooses to organize the content. Content can be files such as Word documents, graphic files, PDF documents, links to external web resources, links to internal Canvas resources such as assignments, discussions, or quizzes, and links to HTML content pages. Clicking in on a content link will take you to a content view page where the content is displayed in the main content area. You will notice the course navigation is still visible on the left hand side of the content area and the global navigation is still visible at the top. By viewing module content, you will notice buttons at the bottom of the page. Use these buttons to navigate between module content. Next we have the assignments section. Clicking on this link will bring you to a page that lists all of the assignments for your course. You can click on each assignment to open it and view the instructions. When you open an assignment, you will see the title of the assignment followed by a menu of information that gives you the due date, point value, and accepted submission formats. Below this menu, you will find any instructions for the assignment that your instructor has added. To submit an assignment, you will click 
a link on the right hand sidebar titled Submit Assignment. This will bring up the area to submit your assignment. Depending on the format your instructor has designated for this assignment, you may see multiple tabs. Navigate to the tab that matches the type of the submission you will be using. This section is similar to the Dropbox section in the old D2L platform. Once you have uploaded your assignment, you can add comments in the designated comments section and then submit your assignment. When you submit an assignment, Canvas will send a notification to the instructor letting them know that you have submitted your assignment and it is waiting to be graded. Next we have the Quizzes tab. If your instructor utilizes quizzes, you will see this link. Click on the link to access and view your course quizzes. Click on the quiz you wish to take and you will open the entry page for the quiz where you will be provided with a blue button to take the quiz. While taking your quiz on the right hand side, you will see a question bank where you can click on the specific questions. As you work through the quiz, you will notice this list of questions will change in style. Answered questions will become a light blue with a check mark next to them. If there is a question mark symbol next to the question, that means it has not been answered. There is also a timer that tracks the amount of time that has passed since you started the quiz. If you do not wish to see the clock, you can click the hide link to hide it from view and alternately click the show link to bring it back. Once you submit your quiz, you will be able to see scores for questions that are automatically graded, which questions still need to be graded by your instructor, and your quiz attempt history. Next we have the grades area. As you finish assignments and they are graded, you will see a blue number next to this tab. When you open the grades area, and upon exiting, you will notice this number will disappear. The number denotes any new grades you have for that course. Accessing the grades section will give you your grade summary for that course. You can print your grades using the print grades icon. You can also create what if scenarios by clicking on the score area and entering in a what if grade. Your total score will be listed at the bottom of the grade summary as well as in the top right. Remember, this is not your actual score, but a what-if scenario. Next we have the Peoples tab. This is equivalent to the class list in the old D2L platform. You will see a full list of all the students and instructors enrolled in your course. You can click on a student's name and view their Canvas profile. You can also view groups if they are assigned or search the roster for a specific user. The next link we have is the SLIS Blackboard Collaborate link. This is the link to any online collaborate rooms that are created by your instructor. You will be able to view any sessions your instructor has created or view any past recordings that may be available. The last couple of links are custom links that have been added to the course. Instructors can add any number of custom links to your course navigation. These are links to external resources that will load directly in Canvas, unless the instructor has specified for them to open in a new tab. When clicking on the link, you may receive a button that prompts you to load this in a new tab because you cannot load unsecured content in this page. This is a browser setting you will need to change to load it in frame. Please visit bit.ly forward slash load content to learn how to adjust your browser settings to load this page. So that concludes this tour of the Canvas environment and gives you a brief overview of all the components of the general Canvas environment as well as course specific sites within Canvas. As you can see, the Canvas platform provides a rich environment for online learning and sharing. I hope you have found this information useful in getting you started to use the Canvas system for your SLIS courses.